Well, well, well. So we meet again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How's it going? It's Liv. And um, today we're continuing with uh, the creation of our RTS. Now, uh, there's a bunch of things I did off camera, and I'm going to show them to you in a minute. First, I'm going to look for some music, okay? So, you know, standard fare of what we always do in this show. <laughs> okay. So, just going to search for... Actually, I think it's... So I wanted to listen to Vampire Tower, but I listen. Uh, I realize uh, this this one album that I really like, and I always forget the name. I know it's something to do with vampire sorcery, right? So, oops. It appears you cannot use the the arrow keys. Oh, here it is, Whipping Moon. I always forget the name of the artist, but yeah, this album is really really good. Okay. So let's listen to that, and uh, I'm gonna show you what I what I was working on uh, off screen, right? So I um, condensed this into a uh, test file, and you know, never mind the text you're about to read. It's a little bit uh, dull, but uh, you know, it, it was just to get the point across. Okay. So as you can see, we have a a, a dialogue thing, right? And so, uh, you know, it has a, a bunch of good things, like it, it will stop, let me, it will stop at the punctuation marks, right? So if you see when it goes to a coma or a exclamation, exclamation mark, it will stop there for a, like a couple frames. If you pay attention, you see that it, it has those, those uh, stops. And so it's, it's really, really good. You know, it's, uh, it's a nice way to convey dialogue through entirely text. And... As you can see, when it reaches the end of the box, it gives you this uh, little symbol here, right? And uh, this little animation, it's just two characters going back and forth between them. And uh, if I press enter, it goes into the next, um, into the next uh, page of the dialogue. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty complete, it's a pretty complete um, set of tools uh, that I been working on for uh, those kind of uh, old school RPG kind of dialogues and what I want to do because uh, this entire uh, thing is contained at least the the glue code for it is contained uh, right here right so sector PM and uh, this uses some functions from cache and cache once again is the um, it's one of my string uh, utilities uh, library but uh, it's using just a few functions from it, actually. Then back four is just, you know, to keep track of, um, of the dimensions and position of, uh, of rects, you know, within a 2D space or 3D space. But in this case, we're only using two dimensions. And then Lycon, this is uh, from another module completely unrelated. And this is where I'm getting all the... Um, all the uh, program clock and um, and keyboard control uh, code from right. So this is actually something I, I coded myself, uh, and you know since I'm at it, I'm just going to show you. So if we go in here, um, so it's part of this uh, of this project in here, which I wanted to make a, a an editor, and I'm going to do it, but not right now, right? Uh, but yeah, I was writing this editor, this uh, text editor in, in C. And so I made uh, this uh, this little clock class. Right, so I do object-oriented programming in standard C. You know, get on my level. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah. So I had, you know, it's it's sort of like a class. It's more or less the, the C equivalent of a class. It's as close as you can get. And uh, basically, you know, here you have a program clock, and then you have uh, the same thing for a uh, keyboard control, right? So I had all of this code in C, and I thought, I don't want to rewrite all of this whenever I want to get uh, access to my keyboard or a program clock. So what I did is, uh, through the through Automat, which is a, my own re-implementation of Make in Perl, uh, I went in here and I coded some functions to first and foremost generate automatically uh, bindings uh, to to C functions 
uh, for Perl, right? So we, we could do Ruby or Python or or some other language, but because I like Perl, I just, uh, you know, it's the language I gave priority to. And so this automatically generates um, the a Perl module that uh, can let you call functions from C, right? So all of that compiled code, I can call from a interpreted language. And then I, uh, I added in some, some extensions to this, uh, to this module containing all of the C code, which I called Lycon, because it's mostly uh, utilities for uh, console uh, applications, right? And uh, te text mode console applications. And so I called it, you know, Con uh, is for that. And Ly, you know, it's that's for me, <laughs> right? So, okay, so anyhow, uh, so I extended uh, Lycon a bit. And so here is the part that is generated, right? And it's just uh, creating a bunch of uh, bindings utilizing uh, Platypus uh, FFI, right? So FFI stands for a foreign uh, function interface, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, it just it gives you the, the bindings. Uh, and so you can now call the functions and all of that good stuff. And on top of that, I added on another file, which I then merged into this one, right? So it's on uh, C Lycon extensions oops so right here you see so I, I wrote this file separately and then you know uh, append it at the end of the generated uh, bindings right oops wanted to okay and so uh, most of what uh, is here is um, a little bit of a more object oriented uh, interface you know I say object oriented but it's really just uh, a I'm just keep putting namespaces on it right so I, I just wrote a bunch of methods to, to sort of um, make the access to these uh, routines a little bit uh, more um, more pretty that's just all, all, all there is so before you know you had to when you wanted to have a keyboard access you had to say you know uh, my uh, my uh, keyboard and you know and start defining a you know a long list of things and you know you had to say for instance uh, key name and then you know you have to make a, an array and say you know you, you had to pass the ID which is uh, it's the name by which the key will be fetched you know it's a little bit complicated but anyhow <laughs> you had to pass this and then a list of uh, of um, of, su of subroutines to be called on uh, on key t on tap events uh, key held and key released events because we detect all three yeah on Linux that's the that's how we roll right so well uh, anyhow the point I'm trying to get at here is that uh, a lot of work has gone into this behind the scenes right so it, this is what we've been building up to this is what we we we've been building up to anyhow uh, and the last thing we have here is Q and what is a Q it's uh, it's sort of like a stack but uh, for uh, for procedures right so you say you want to have uh, you want to call a function I'm gonna say procedure because I'm a snob so you want to call a procedure with a given uh, number of arguments and then after that you want to call another procedure with a given number of arguments and after that you want to call another procedure with a given number of arguments and you want to do this and in the middle you want to have it goes a little bit like this you have a main and you need to run on the on the first on the first iteration you want to run this then you want to go back in here and on the second iteration, you want to do this. And on the third iteration, you want to do this, right? So it's not doing one after the other. This needs to be executed in a particular spot within your main loop. And uh, and you have you know you have some say, you have some uh, some draw function here. You have some logic call here, right? And here the loop ends, and when it goes back, you go 
second iteration, next procedure, next set of arguments. So that's basically what uh, Q, the, the kind of uh, coding style that Q is accommodating. And it's doing so with some mechanisms that I built into Lycon, okay? So if I show you here, we have the loop module and it's basically doing uh, what, um, what I just described. We have a main loop with a tight structure, right? So this is what always has to run. Okay, so first we get the event count, so the, the, the number of, um, of key presses or, uh, or active key presses, if you will. Or, uh, you know, it, it can evolve to being other things, but for now it's only keyboard. Anyhow. And then we have uh, a check. We want to, to have a given check if uh, the, the, we need to redraw anything. And if so, then we invoke the draw function, whatever the draw function is. It is something we can swap for, for another, you see. So we can replace the draw procedure for another procedure, any, any other procedure we want, okay? And, well, same thing in here. We then uh, tick the, the clock, the program clock, and this is what gives us our, uh, our pause, right? So this is where the, we sleep for a few milliseconds. Then uh, we do the, the, the reading of, uh, of any new events. And then we process the logic. So perhaps the structure is a little bit off. Uh, maybe uh, you will do things differently. But, you know, in my experience, this is uh, good enough. Right? In my experience, this is good enough. It's a good starting point. So anyhow, uh, the, the problem I, I had with this is that uh, I had made so these uh, printing functions it didn't work, uh, you know, with it, it, it that it that queued module, mo model, module, mo modeling, <laughs> model, right? So what I had to do is um, write uh, this uh, little procedure. I had to rewrite a bunch of, uh, of procedures here, but this is the most important one, which I had to write from scratch. And it does two things. One, it uh, redefines the the procedures that need to be called on certain events so given uh, namely i meant to say namely uh, the events we're talking about are, are pressing of the return key for you know going to the next page and uh space uh, because you know it's pretty common that when you have those dialogues you you can press a key to speed them up right and matter of fact we can do that. Uh, if I press space here, you can see it, it speeds up. So yeah, that's that's basically what. I, I registered the, the key just for that purpose. Uh, so anyhow, after, after we've done that uh, redefinition, or rather before, we save what was uh, defined to those keys before. Because when we call uh, the the keyboard define, what we do is uh, we pass exactly this, so it's uh, the internal, uh, the rather uh, user given name for the key, in this case, red, the internal name. So this is the name you'll find in the, in the, key, in the keyboard lay files. So this is red, the so return, and then a subroutine for on tap, a subroutine for on held, and a subroutine for uh, on release. Okay. And you can save the previous definitions. And so instead of having to, to check uh, inside the subroutine, instead of having to check for the context you're in in order to determine which action you need to take, you just, when you enter a new context, you save what, uh, what was defined before, redefine, and then at the end, you uh, restore the previous definition, right? And so there's a little bit of that. And then uh, what also we do when we make this, uh, this uh, control switch, as I called it, because, you know, you're basically uh, changing which... Uh, you're, basically, you're sort of changing which module has control of the main loop, so to speak, right? Uh, or which, uh, which module the, the main loop is actually executing. You, you could also phrase it like that. 
but anyhow um what what we're doing here is uh we we queue a bunch of uh, of procedures to be run and what we want to do is execute them all and once that uh, there, there's no more uh, procedures uh, pending for execution then we return control and thus uh, you know we return to the to the previous uh, context we were in and this is also what uh, what this is doing behind the scenes so switch is saving some of the uh, it is saving the state. It is preserving the state of the of the previous uh, logic and drawing uh, functions that were defined. And once you return, it restores them. And so this uh, actually it will work uh, recursively, right? So you can switch to a module that would switch control, and then uh, that call another module that will switch control again, right? So you can make a chain of of these uh, control switches. It's, which is actually quite cool, okay? So, it, it's quite complex the way all of this works. And, uh, you know, I can explain it now. And it took me, how about, what, 16 minutes just to explain all of this. You know, imagine if you had to see me, uh, you know, feeling about trying to get it to work just right. And, uh, well, you know, the point is, now it works. The point is, now it works, and it's uh, actually kind of kind of cool. All right. So, what I want to do... Is just uh, completely divorced from all of these uh, preoccupations. Uh, I want to make a a dialogue, right? So I want a a dialogue kind of kind of thing, and uh, I need to to do some of this behind the scenes stuff, some a little bit more, just for uh, you know, just just to make sure I don't shoot myself in the foot uh, while writing applications uh, with Lycon. Uh, so I need to tighten the system a little bit, but, you know, because I'm aware of these flaws, I can uh, waltz around them more or less good. Okay, so let's go into our game, <laughs> game, quote-unquote, um, directory. And what I want to do is I want to create a dialog class, okay? So we're going to create a diag.pm. And uh, once again, I do not need the shebang, but I like to put it in there just in case I ever want to execute the the module as if it were a, a script. Okay, so let's uh, speed run the docus. Okay, so this is diag. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, lever software. And this is license on the GNU GPL tree. Be a bro and inherit. Okay, all right. So contributors, that's uh, live, that's me. All right. So okay, and we have to return one at the end. Okay. And so depths, and we have uh, this is the package diag for dialog. We want to use the good pragmas as always, and we also want to use our library. Okay. So live. And this, we're going to grab this from our environment variables. This is what ENB means. We're going to grab the opath variable, which is just, you know, a, an environment variable like any other. You just write it in your, uh, in your Vasher C, right? So, and our path, and here we go. It's just a, a folder like any other. So anyhow, I want to grab it's from Liv. And from Liv, I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to take sector, uh, vector 4, because I want to define uh, rectangles. And, you know, it, it's nice to say, you know, uh, coordinates uh, dot x, right? It's it's nice thing to, to have. Uh, on top of that, we're going to need, uh, I guess, a little bit of Lycon, at least. Um, hmm, what else? Anything else? I think not. Well, uh, we'll figure it out uh, as we go. Okay. Okay, so first things first. We need a knit. Alright, so... So, knit, and actually... Um, I would like to open up a sector as well, so I can... So I can sort of uh, check uh, if I'm doing things correctly as I go. But anyhow... And the in is going to be 
Uh, well, I guess I guess there's not going to be an end just yet. I'm just going to to make this up as I go. Okay. So anyhow, I want to bless a unspecified number of uh, arguments and um, unspecified number of um, attributes. I'm going to say. And it's going to be a diag. Okay. Anyhow. Hmm. Okay, so the first thing I need is a handle to the rect. Okay. This is the one I create uh, with this. And actually I need to create two. I'll get into that in a minute. But, um, yeah, I need a, a handle to this, so let's just say stack. And, um, what I'm, I had to create this, and so that would be a sector net. And let me check. Well, okay, so I need to pass it coordinates, size, and color. And color is actually a hexadecimal number, so, uh, one byte, uh, hexadecimal and basically this would be a a color from 0 to 16 color from 0 to 16 and that would correspond to the the colors uh, that I have here right so it will vary depending on which colors you define here which is fine okay and yeah I'm using arch by the way <laughs> so okay so let's uh, actually create this uh, I guess let's say back for knit and uh, I'm just gonna put it to the top of the of the screen and then we'll figure it out anything else we need to do so zero zero and then the size um, I guess I would like to make it uh, as big as the as the screen. That would be nice. So I can do TTY size, right? So I I have that with Lycon. So I can do I think it's uh, TTY size, right? Where, where am I? Nope, it's not this one. Yeah, it's TTY size. Okay. TTY size. Alright. So, Lycan TTY uh, size. And actually, I need to create this first. Give it two members. And then call the function. Uh, because it, it's, uh, it's a C function. So, I'm passing a uh, an end pointer. Right? And so, I need to call it like this. Alright. So yeah, all right. So now we have the the screen size. So let's make it. I want to say. Ty size uh, zero. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then I want to make um, how tall? Let's say uh, sixteen. Sixteen tall. Okay. So that would be uh, in you know in in rows, right? So in, it's all measured in in characters. <laughs> so anyhow, sixteen characters tall. That's good. All right. So I need to pass a color as well, since I'm listening to vampire music <laughs> for whichever reason. Let's make this. Uh, I guess it would look cool if I give it. Uh, black and red now let's try red and uh deep blue or something let's see what happens okay so yeah actually eight you know i, I set black to be eight <laughs> I, I mean i set black to be blue right and so zero is uh is black and eight is uh so zero is black and i've set it to be blue and 8 would be grey, and I've set it to be more blue, right? <laughs> so, yeah. 
you know, just just roll with it, right? So this would be gray. Uh, so I'm setting red, dark red, and gray, okay? Or bright black, if you will, but uh, no, that's gray. Okay. Anyhow, we have our sector. Um, hmm? What else? Nothing else? Right, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. All right. So I can create that. And just as a test, let's actually... Um, hmm. I can't quite put this into words, no? Let's actually try to draw this, okay? So I want to say box. And... Um, And check. Hmm. What's the room? Right, because it's all, it's all cute now. Okay, so give me a second here. So I just I just noticed one problem. I want to draw this this thing to the screen, but because I've <laughs> because I wrote this to work with the Lycan cute module. Then uh, now I kind of have to uh, utilize uh, the the, the Lycan uh, stuff to to use it. So actually, I'm gonna have to to do a couple things here, but n no matter, it can be done. And you know it, 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 it will be it will be a nice uh, occasion to s sort of show you how to make uh, Lycan applications. Though it's you know it's it's really not within the scope of this uh, this series. But you know what? You know, it, it's it's a good thing to to document anyhow. Okay, so let me just roll real quick. And we Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. All right, here we go. Good, 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 and tight. That's nice. Okay. So anyhow, um, so I have a draw method here. Right, but uh, it's going to it's going to queue it, okay? So if I go into uh, sub draw here, so you can see, it puts it into the oh no. Oh, it puts it into the draw buff of Lycan. All right. Huh. Well, then I can just oh, then I can force it. All right. So, yeah, it's actually being queued, but not really. So, it is queued, and when Lycan gets to the... Get, gets to, to reading this draw buffer, it will print it out. You know, if, if you're using... Uh, if you're using ASCII for, for drawing, it will just print it out as is. Um, but what I can do is just say... Lycan draw, yeah. So Lycan loop draw. I'm pretty sure I can do that. So let's actually try it, okay? I'm gonna go into my uh, project folder, and uh, let's, since we have a, I'm actually gonna zoom in. So, huh. we're doing all of this. Uh, let's just, yeah, this is this is not important right now. Let's uh, use diag or diag, okay? And uh, let's just, yeah, I need to, yeah, I I still need to work on these four classes, so I'm gonna leave them there, okay? Uh, but now we're, we're dealing with this, you know, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but, you know, it's a nice thing to, to get it done, right, to get, to get it done now, okay? 
So anyhow, I want to say uh, diagnit and it's just going to do its thing. Okay. So let's see what happens. Okay. Can't locate back four. Hmm. Oh, I know. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little adjustment here. But it is actually a good opportunity to show you how my uh, my automation tools work, okay? So I need to go into Automate. Oops. Automate uh, or Install. And this is sort of the, the setup script. And, uh, okay, so here. So we have LCopy, which is a list of, uh, of files that are within a project folder that need to be copied to, to live, which is sort of like the common, it's like the common grounds, right? So it's where you put the things that you want to reuse. And so right here, I just need to add sector PM and uh, beg for PM. And that's that, right? And now if I run it, and I go into live, it should be sector and back four. Okay, so that's so that's that basically. And now it should be able to find. Okay, it's st <laughs> still showing an error. Okay, that's fine. So where did I go wrong? Let's see. It's saying that well, symbol sec. No, but that's declare so forty six. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay, one fatal mistake like in TTY size. So it doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Huh. Pretty sure this was a real thing, but let's just check. Live. Uh, like and dot. Not OMPM. Let's search for TTY size. Oh, because I need to initialize it. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, uh, let me go into PM. Nope. <laughs> it's not PM. Okay. So I need to import Lycan. I'm already doing so. And we actually need to initialize Lycan before we're able to do anything with it. Okay. All right. So let's try that again. Negative repeat count does nothing. Well, my God. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so this is interesting. Where did I go wrong, huh? Okay. So sector PM. Let me put on the arena soundtrack. It's like uh, you know, I listen to this one a lot. It's like the it's like the magic trick, right? It's like my secret. Right? How do I manage to keep a straight face while coding this insanity kind of? <laughs> no, these insanities. You know, I listen to the arena soundtrack. That is my secret. That is my secret. Okay. So let me just have a drink here. So I want to read the error message carefully. So this part is just uh, once again if the if the developer of uh, Platypus is watching this video please please man uh let me remove this warning uh please pretty pretty please man uh you know <laughs> please <laughs> let me remove this warning man you know I, 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 I can't I can't be going, uh, you know, 
searching, you know, sifting through your code to see where these uh, these uh, spitting into standard error is is being made. You know, I, I I cannot be doing that. Please give me the option to turn it off. But anyhow, it's uh, you know, it it can be safely ignored. When I what I need to check here is this negative repeat count. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It it might be an error that was there before and I sort of uh, forgot about it. The five tree. Huh. Wouldn't you know? Minus two. So this is um, trying to calculate the the size across. Right. So the the horizontal uh, padding. Right. So the the space between the first character in the rectangle and the and the last okay so it so basically the x is 0 is what this is telling me Kind of weird. Like, wait, 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 wait. Just, just a minute, okay? And it's just, um... Just print these things out just to, to be entirely sure. No, oh, actually, size. Wait up. No, um, just five, three. No, yeah, it's discounting from size. So size was effectively zero, and that's what happened. So let's comment out all of these. Oops. And it's not dot, it's an arrow. Okay. Okay, so print that out for me, please. Never mind this. Just give me the print. Okay, so zero, zero. So TTY size is not returning what it ought to return. That's interesting. Let me check. Because I was using this just fine. Some time ago. Yeah. This, this is precisely how, it's, how I was using it. What's the problem now? How can it be zero? Hmm. Hmm. Let me check the source real quick. So this should be... Actually, you know what? I can check in the in the lib file. Okay. TTY size. <clears throat> this is from all standard. Okay. Standard dot C and I want TTY size. Okay. I don't see why this wouldn't work. It has worked before just fine. 
So, hmm. Maybe it cannot find the window. That 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 could be one. Maybe it cannot find the right window. Could it be? But I mean, no, it it, it can find it. it because this is likely referencing the 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 TTY itself. So no, I don't think. So it it you know it has to look at the at the TTY it is running on. But it's really weird that it would return zero zero. So maybe that means that there is an error in there somewhere. Hmm. Well, this is traumatizing. I'm just kidding. But um, let me check uh, something else real quick. Because here we have window size as well. So what am I doing in here? So this is where we capping cursor movement. Okay. Yeah, right. And we get it the exact same way. So we have to pass, right, so in a file descriptor to which the uh the the terminal is connected to. I would suppose. So, which file descript I'm using here? I'm using that would be standard out, right? Yeah. Should I need to be more explicit about it, maybe? I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't. Um, let's go back. Zero, zero. Well, that's uncanny. But uh, if I do... Yeah, if I do that, no problem. Yeah. Well, this this it's it's really weird. It's really weird. I don't know. Um. You know, now just 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 to get uh through this, um, uh, I'm just gonna do it the 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 cheap dirty way. Okay. Do this to Y size. Uh, we need to split that at uh, at spaces. Okay, and you know it, this is a, the dirty way to do it, but you know just just to get this over with right now. Okay, what? What? That's not right. Coordinate first, then size. All right, what is going on here? It's a setting now. Then it's not. Then it's not. This function being dysfunctional. Okay. It's something else going on here. TTY size zero. Ugh. I need a new keyboard. I can barely type on these old keys. They shave too much. Tape, is that the right? Yeah. You see, the function is alright. Aha! Then there's another problem here. You're telling me these things are inverted. Let me just undo a lot of times real quick. Okay. Okay, this makes absolutely no sense. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> okay, so I fucked up big time. Okay. So when you 
And this is this I suppose would be serve you as a little lesson on Perl. Okay. So when you say uh module sub module, right? If you say it like that, you know, no nothing gets passed as instant. But when you do it like this, it's like this is assumed to be a, the like the first argument, right? So it's like you're saying uh object thing is different than when you say mod thing, right? So in this case, it's assumed that you're calling thing from object and thus object is self and self would be the first argument. And so whenever you shift, self would be there. And so that's what happens when you call it like this. <laughs> and when you call it like that, that's, that's, that's another story. Okay. So now, okay, now it works. All right. So, okay, you know, you see, one one symbol in difference makes all the difference. Okay, so that's terrible, but, okay. All right, and there we have our square. <laughs> okay, good. Um, but it's it's not looking quite so vampiric as I ambitioned. So let's actually change the colors. Um, I guess we could do just uh, inverted. Something like that. Is that, is that cool? Is that is that nice? You can also do uh, red text, I guess. And this would be green. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to play a little bit with this. If it's fun. No, you can do a lot of things with this. Okay, so that's. <laughs> I I like this because it's really it reminds me of like uh, of like really shitty '90s games, you know. <laughs> Like the, like the, uh, what, what am I saying, 90s? This is like 80s, I think. <laughs> it's that kind of aesthetic, no? <laughs> okay, I mean, I think it's at the same time absolutely horrible and also really, really cool. It's also really, really cool. <laughs> so. I'm just going to have another drink here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> All right. So, um, I feel there are three elements to uh, to a proper old school kind of dialogue all right the first one obviously is uh, the box here and the the text inside it and the you know and the in the continuing thing you know the the thing that i've already coded basically the next thing is uh we need to to be able to at least from time to time be able to select uh a dialogue option ourselves you know then if that uh, branches into different responses, you know, that's another story. Uh, we can uh, figure that out later. But, you know, just having the mechanics of being able to choose one path over another, that's uh, that's good enough. And I guess that's uh, what I'm going to do now. Uh, and then the second part, I would guess, the third, actually the third, the third part that's essential is some kind of portrait right like uh like what you have in uh, you know you know in this in this japanese uh rpgs that you have like 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 the drawn version of the of the character appear when you initiate dialogue right and they you know and they strike different poses depending on what is being said you know <laughs> so we're doing ascii entirely ascii so we're not gonna have like um like too much uh, in the way of uh, detail there right but we can have some detail because guess what in order to in order to uh view uh the the thumbnails here on the on the console youtube thing uh i had to download this little program called chaffa 
and uh, this is actually really really nice uh, software you know props to the devs uh, you know really really nice uh, and it says it can also uh, work with animated gifs so shit you know uh, is it gif or gif i don't care but uh, you know really really nice tool and i was uh, playing around with it actually and um i decided i wanted to do something with it i'm not entirely sure what but i'm just gonna show you uh, this thing here if i can copy it okay oops no not really okay so let me just read it <laughs> okay so okay so i think it was like this <laughs> okay so cruelty i think i have a uh, bail the jpeg there we go so that's the eastern veil that's a uh, nebula a really cool nebula um let me check what the other arguments were so uh, so I wanna get I wanna get it right because I had Okay. So that's that's more like the style we're shooting for. <laughs> you know, more degraded. You know, more more degraded and putrid, but that's also nice, you know. We can have that kind of image. And if we uh, increase if we decrease the the size of the of the characters we can have more detailed images so that's a thing to keep in the back of my of our minds no and look at that look at that that's gorgeous anyhow and uh now that you've seen my uh, wallpaper let me just you see so we can we can have uh some some imagery in the console entirely with uh in text mode um i'm still going to you know to to make like actual uh sprites you know i'm gonna do that in blender not right now but uh, we're gonna be doing that in blender and uh since i'm gonna be doing it in, in blender it means you know i'm probably going to be working with uh, with 3D models at least for for the initial animation, and so you know, likely I'll just code up something in SDL to uh, to draw the sprites on screen and be done with it. It's actually not that difficult, but I think that just as a proof of concept doing it entirely in ascii uh utilizing these uh, these uh, chaffa drawings it might actually be worth it because as you might have uh been able to figure out by now we can actually send this to a to a file you know so now i can just read that and here is all the Basically, all of the ants escapes used to draw this, right? So, and it's mostly, it's mostly just, just coloring. Mostly just coloring, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so no positions, right? Let me just check. Okay, so no repositioning of the cursor, it's just coloring. So, that's actually really nice. Um... It means I can move them around. So I would I would like to try I would like to try um, using Chaffa to generate you know the the ASCII versions of the sprite work. Uh, but you know we're still going to make uh, actual actual sprites uh, and then you know demake them so to speak because you know it's it's nice to have you know entirely entirely ASCII. But anyhow. that <laughs> I, I know it was just just this but you know i mean the i mean the pressing the the up key kind of kind of school of, of programming you know <laughs> uh, 
you know, it's like going going up 15 commands in your history just for CD, you know? <laughs> for CD or LS, right? That kind of thing. So. Let's add uh, one thing to our to-do. And hopefully we'll get that done uh, today. Let's see. We're about one hour in and we've barely done any work. That's so cute. Well, you know, I've been doing a lot of explaining. So obviously I wouldn't get quite as much done. Okay. Let's just open this up. And uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> append uh, something here. Because I want to work on... Um, that I know that to do and um, and on the diag because why not and that's took took and took and I want to um, dialogue choices and in dialogue choices I think we really, 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 really need to have a mechanism for speed checks, you know? Kind of like, you know, like, like you have in uh, in Fallout, I think. Uh, or in, in, in Neverwinter Nights, you do have them, right? So you have like, you'll have a, a, a bunch of dialogue, uh, dialogue options. And one would say something like, you know, I don't know, uh, diplomacy, right? And... Um, Hail, sir. <laughs> and, some, and some really, really polite dialogue. And then you'll have, you know, intimidation, you know. And he will say, you know, hey, uh, butt cheeks, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> right? And depending on your score in that skill, it will either give you one result or the other. So I think that's a really nice thing to have in games. Uh, so I want to have a little bit of that. Even though we're making an RTS and not an RPG, I think, you know, having some blend... It's, you know, it cannot hurt, okay? So we want to have dialogue choices. And because anyhow, we need dialogue choices to make a menu. And we're go and if we're going to make a menu entirely on uh, on ASCII, you know, we, this is what we have to deal with. So the first thing we have to look at is uh, arrows, uh, control with the arrows, okay? So I'm going to use uh, the arrows for controlling the menus. And I guess... Uh, the WASD, so WASD, WASD, uh, for the uh, unit movement, because uh, the control of this game is going to be entirely with the uh, keyboard, all right? So, the way we have to do that is, uh, well, first we need to initialize the Lycan, and uh, then we need to define uh, the keys, all right? So that's uh, keyboard, define, and we need to do this for um for a few keys and hmm actually what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say for my uh key settings key settings in uh keys just going to do that it's going to define, and um, then we're going to, oh, yeah. he said. so we're going to expand this uh, to an array, okay? And then we do on to um, Lycan uh, keyboard net, and that's, that's about that, okay. So we need to define this uh, keys array. Okay. So I'm going to do that um, after the to-dos because I like having that at the top. Okay. So my keys, my key, right? So it has to be a list of uh, the, the internal name. So up. I'm going to say A up, so arrow up. Right? 
if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, just up. And then I have to give it a list of, um, of procedures. For now, we're going to leave it uh, blank. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load uh, the, the procedures for these uh, keys from a file, okay? So I, I already have some mechanisms for doing that, but um, um, I'm, I haven't tested them, so I need to do that later. A left, left, and a uh, right. And actually, I'm going to abbreviate this. I'm going to say this forward, why not? Forward, right, so forward, back, left, and right. That's better, okay. So I think it's uh, it's exactly like this, all right. So let's also define uh, return and space, because I need that for... Um, for sector, right? So for the for the dialogue, I need to define these. And what I should do actually is make it so when you include um, when you include the, the 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 sector. Where is it? Oh, it's not here. Okay, but when you include sector um, for the for the boxes and things, it forces. To have these definitions but i'm not entirely sure how to do it so we'll figure that out later so anyhow uh return that's just return and again just empty and uh, i will we'll define them later and i want to define space and scape as well okay i'm actually gonna call this one jump yeah, I'm just going to call it space. I could, I could call it jump, but I would have to change it in, in other places as well. So it wouldn't be uh, so cute. You know what? Let's actually do it. <laughs> Let's actually do it. Okay. So let me just space here. Because in order to save the previous definition, I need to know the key to it, right? So, hmm, not so nice, not so nice. Actually, what I should do is just um, make it so you only have to use one key. That would make more sense, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I definitely need to rework a lot of this, but if I get into doing that, I, I'm never going to make any progress uh, with the actual game. So, so anyhow. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. Okay, so let, let's just uh, have these defined. And what I want to do is just make it so there is at least a a way to exit the main loop, right? Oops. So, um, again, uh, terminate one. I could say hmm. ah, let's say terminate, okay it it cannot mean anything else but terminate, okay so you know, I'm just I'm just going to make it like this. This is the lazy way to do it by the way, but just because and um hmm. Now I, I should give uh, these um, these variables. I should give. I should wrap them into something, right? Okay. So I'm gonna do that at a later stage. Uh, for now, this is good enough. Okay. Because once we initialize the keyboard, another thing we need to do. After this. And, oh no, actually, I'm not gonna. So what that what that does is it uh, clears the screen. I'm not gonna do that because it might uh, it might hide error messages. So I'm not gonna do that yet. But um... after I initialize the keyboard, what I want to do is stop uh, forcing this uh, to draw and just do the drawing on the main loop itself, okay? 
So once we need the dialogue, we want to do the like an loop main. But uh, oh no, run. Actually, so the problem here is um, I need to set the the quit condition for this. So I think it's like an loop set uh, quit, and that should be. Actually, I can just write it like this. Terminate. Okay, and so when we set this to one, it should quit. So let's test that out real quick. And yeah, okay. So check it. It's uh, not quitting, right? So I have no control over this. So I'm pressing a bunch of keys. Nothing happens. I press escape. Nothing happens. I let go. And we're back here. So we've successfully detected the the key up event for uh, for escape. And I'm actually going to open it the file here. So um we've assigned a subroutine to the uh, to the key release and that uh, subroutine run successfully so you know just uh, just showing you that uh you know key up events on linux is not so difficult to detect okay that's only if you're if you're doing some funky crap over ssh which you shouldn't do actually <laughs> you know you, you should you shouldn't try to run a desktop over uh over any kind of of, of connection any any time you add any network connection to how your machine is supposed to run, that's stupid. You shouldn't do it. But anyhow. We can detect the key release events. I will hammer this in the head as many times as I have to. You no, know, just to show off that I can do it. <laughs> That is actually pretty easy. So we already have those uh, keys defined. So what I want to do now is um, have some kind of a pointer, you know, to to say uh, where the where in the menu we were selecting, right? So we need to create a a few options and be able to to move between them, right? So that way we can have a menu. Okay. So all of this uh, UI work is actually completely divorced, completely, completely divorced from, you know, like the actual work of uh, game development. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of something that I always leave for last. And I, then I hate, it, I hate myself for it because, I, you know, I, I've made none of the infrastructure. Right? I made all of the mechanics and none of the infrastructure. This is what, what that is. We do need to detect key presses. So, yeah, you know, it's a boring kind of task to do, but it's the kind of systems deep shit that I enjoy the most. And, you know, it, and it's important stuff to do. So, yeah, it's just that. Sometimes, sometimes you have to take the game developer in you and shove it down, you know? <laughs> And show it down like your feelings. <laughs> so okay. Um we have to cycle between options, so I guess we are only going to work with the up and down key. At least for now. Uh yeah, we, we could we could do with the with the left and oh wait. <laughs> I made two ups. What am I? Stupid. <laughs> but anyhow. We're only going to be working, at least for now, only with the up and down. And, uh, huh. We 
we'll have to make a drawing. We have to make little, little drawing um, calls to to color the button the buttons differently depending on on what is selected. And I'll, I'll get to to why in a second. Uh, But, you know, it's going to look something like this, right? You're going to have option one, option two, option, oops, option three, and so on. And when you select one, it needs to be highlighted, right? And optionally, you know, have like a, like a little arrow to the side, right? That's nice, you know? And so we're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of additional drawing to whenever we, we switch between an option and, and another to decolor what's colored remove the arrow add the arrow to the other one and and highlight it okay so yeah that's what we have to do so dialogue choices and that means we need to um highlight selected highlight the highlight Um, and we do have, we're going to be running this with the Lycon loop system. So we need to actually, um, adapt it to Lycon view model, right? So I'm pretty sure there's, there's like, um, like an industry name for this kind of, um, this kind of program structure but uh, i don't know i don't know it so i'm just going to call it this right so you know bear with me and my weird tendency to invent names for things okay so we've been at it for an hour and 11 minutes okay hmm okay so we already have a box right we already have a box and we can exit so what we should do is uh, add a bunch of options in there okay hmm. so i'm trying to think about uh, what i want to do next i guess uh i'm going to add global state here I'm gonna have uh, these things over here so um, current menu I'm just going to start at on that and um, I guess at menu we can have a selected thing, right? So we actually we can actually put that in here. So rect and oh yeah, and for the rect I have to do something else, but uh, I'll get to it in a, in a second. Rect and um, selected, I guess we're gonna start that at zero, and if there is none, then just um, actually, if there are no options, it should be on there, right? Yeah, so let's start it at on there. Okay. So what we would need to do... Hmm. thinking <clears throat> um 
Right, I'm gonna make some uh, some ghettos here. Just real quick. Just because. And I'm actually gonna do this with uh, the old get set. I'll explain what that is in a second. So alt just is a bunch of uh, programming uh, utilities I use, and get set what it does is it. Um, I'm just gonna show you. It basic the mechanism is as follows: is you pass an argument to this uh, subroutine, then it assumes the role of a getter of a setter, right? So it sets the value. And then at the end, it returns it anyhow, because why not? Uh, and so if you pass, no arguments, nothing is set, and you just get the value back, okay? So we have to pass uh, cache as a reference. We need to pass uh, the key, and we need to pass uh, whichever arguments we have, if any. And that's a wrap, okay. Right, then... I'm going to do the same thing with the menu. And these uh, two semicolons, just so these are the, uh, the, at the same, they begin at the same column. Just do that. So, current menu. So, then you can do, for instance, you can say uh, current menu. You know, and pass a an instance of menu, and then just uh, invoke one of the methods. You know, for instance, um, uh, cell next, for instance, right? So to eta true, but generally we would do it like this. We wouldn't because get set always returns the the value. You can set uh, the menu and then just af right after you set it. just uh, invoke that which you have just set but uh, we're not going to be doing that so, yeah. and yeah we could actually we could actually set <laughs> and this I know this is incredibly stupid but you know it, <laughs> we could set reset the current uh, menu to whatever the current menu is uh, already and then invoke that, <laughs> but <laughs> that would serve no purpose, so yeah. Okay, so let's, um, let's put some more music. Um, what about some Jeremy Soul? Some Gnoll, I think it's how you pronounce this. Yeah, one hour and a half of Jeremy Soul, of one Jeremy Soul tool, and that's amazing. All right, let's go. Okay. So. What we want to do is, uh, I'm just going to do this on tap. Because it's easier to think about. Just gonna say that uh, on tap, we want a subroutine to say uh, to just run this cell um, previous. And yeah, I'm gonna at some point I'm gonna load these from a file, but um, for now, just to get something that kind of works let's just okay all right so now we actually need to implement these methods and yeah we need to uh, set c menu to diag okay so let's say current menu is equal to diagnit 
Okay. And uh, I guess we can... Well, because the game is going to start at the menu, then uh, we can just have the default configuration for the keys, be that of, uh, of the menu context. And then if you enter different contexts, we can just change these around, right? So, hmm, I'm not going to check if this is on death because generally if C menu is not set, then this uh, should never be invoked in the first place. So actually, right after the knit and before we initialize the keys, you know, because it, it will be a, a time window of milliseconds in which you could press a key and call this method and this would be undefined, so yeah, no, no thanks. Um, and because I need Lycan for some of the functionality here, I kind of want to initialize Lycan first, so yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let's um, write these methods. Go sub, uh, sub rev. Oh, Mr. Soul. Okay, so there's not much we can do right now. We don't really have a good way to do anything, but let's try this. Uh, we can set the text of a sector using the, I think it's set text, no? Let's see. Yeah, set text. Okay, so I can set it to be whatever I want. And what um, I what I have to do is uh, I have to create a an inner rectangle for the for the box. So that should be uh, inner. Okay. Let me just check. Okay, so I have to pass the size of the edge. So that is uh, how many characters uh, from the edge uh, here, right? So if you don't want the text to appear right uh, on this corner, you want it more like here, then you have to, to pass that. Uh, and the minimum is one, because I don't want the, the inner rectangle to collide with the, with the box characters, so yeah. And also a color. Okay. So we're just going to let's see. Oh, I don't really have to pass anything to this. That's nice. Okay. Let's just create an inner. And now we can access that by saying uh, children zero, right? Oh, I didn't make a a getter for that. That's curious. So right, so I have set parent, but I do not have child. Okay. I'm actually going to say children. Now I should be able to reference it like this. I could just say, you know, my inner. Um, okay. And what I should do is say inner uh, text. No, set text to just, I don't know, to something, say yada, yada, and um, I want to fill that,
So this uh, basically takes the, the string you provided and it makes sure that, uh, that it doesn't uh, write out of bounds. In this case, it won't do because uh, we made a very short string. But if we were to enlarge on this, and actually I'm going to do it. So yada, 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 yada. Okay. And I say fill. And uh, yeah, why not? Let's say sec draw and inner draw. Now when I run this, okay, so I have, oh. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. So this is the get set, so I can just pass it like this. All right. And as you can see, uh, the yada yadas are uh, wrapping to the to the space we're, we're giving them. So if when I create this uh, inner, I give it a bigger edge, you see it uh, it will you know it's one two three and one two three right so yeah we have the we sort of have what what we need to sort of get this working now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to choose uh, better colors for this because you know, it's 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 cute uh, making it in those colors, but at some point it gets annoying. So let's try just inverted, I guess. Okay, yada 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 yada. Okay, cool. So I just try to call the <laughs> the cell next method, and apparently uh, something here doesn't work. Can't call method cell text without package or object reference. Okay. Oh, because this is returning nothing. <laughs> All right. So we have to return diag. Okay, so now I can actually run those methods and nothing happens, obviously, but we can say, for instance, I don't know, uh, printf back. And here we print f uh, forward, and it prints nothing. Oh, yeah, it does, but uh, it did not flush. Okay, so okay, all ah, right. Because what I need to do is I need to say uh, lichen loop um, dw buff. Right, so I need to append to the draw buffer. There we go. Okay. And so, you know, it, this is not very useful, but we, once we have uh, options in our rectangle, <clears throat> we can actually use this. <clears throat> okay. So I, I'm not, you know, the problem I'm having now is I realize I sort of need to do something here to to try and get the options to 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 appear centered on the box because what we want is not you know just a, an unbroken body of text what we want is a list of options right and uh, there are multiple ways in which you can list options in uh, inside a box. So we actually need to account for those. And uh, yeah, that's actually going to go into the sector class, right? 
But you know, uh, it, it's not so bad having to write these uh, drawing functions because you know it it will it will it will help us uh, later on. You know, when you when you already have uh, these kinds of things written, you know, I've made it so a every time I've already written something, I never have to write it again. So you know, that's actual object-oriented programming, by the way. You know, code reusability, right? The, like the one the one thing that uh, that that classes are supposed to be good for. Right? What? Well, why do you think you have inheritance? Why do you think inheritance is so important? Reusability, moron. <laughs> like what? Did, did you think you know we just do things because it's cute? No, it has a purpose. It does have a purpose. You know, most people don't realize it. Sadly. Okay. So I, I'm sorry that uh, I, I spent so much time just you know, just looking at the code and, and maybe not uh, doing so much uh, programming, but you know, I sometimes I just have to sit down and think. I don't like it either, you know, but it's part of the process. It's part of the process, and you know, uh, speaking speaking out loud, you know, certainly helps. And yes, my microphone is plugged in. Oh, my God, I was so afraid. That I was talking to myself. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So I need to create a rather than a set, uh, rather than a fill, uh, fill method. I need to create um, because all that method does is adapt. The, the the string you passed it adapts it to the to the size of the of the rect right so we need to do some of that so we need to do some adapting to the size but um, we need to do that uh, with individual elements right so we pass in one option uh, you know one string that needs to appear in you know in one row or two rows or three rows or however however many it takes it needs to be either centered or aligned uh, right or left uh, things like that we'll we'll figure that out later but for now what we need to do is to fit uh the options and then on the next row fit the next option and then on the next row and so on and so forth and um and i guess also give uh, the option to for scrolling right so if all the options do not fit within the rect. We draw a little arrow to let us uh, go down, and I already have most of the logic needed to do that. But you know, I, I sort of have to get my my thoughts in order before I I I, I do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to half fast, okay? Uh, so I'm going to half fast the options uh method and then I'll refine it, all right? But right now I'm just going to put it together you know quickly so that uh, to know that it works to have something and then you know off screen I'll just refine it all right so we have fill and now we need to do a fill uh, list I'm gonna say so it's going to be uh, same for um multiple strings let's say for a list of strings i'm gonna say 
So sub field list. Oops. So as always, because you would call this with uh, instance instance method, the first argument is implicitly self. Okay. <sighs> Or, you know, I guess if you're a C++ guy, it will be this, right? So, self is this. Actually, I have it set so both will, right? Because self is uh, more of a Python thing, I believe. Usually. Okay. The first thing we need to do is get the coordinates and size. So we'll do that. And the list, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this as a separate uh, argument. Separate, um, what do you say? Um, Separate me uh, att attribute, no, method. Att no, attribute, yes, attribute, there. Yeah. Okay, now, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say prev next, and I'm going to have to make a few changes in here. So, real quick, let's go find uh, text rem. I'm doing it like this uh, because at some points it appears written like that. So yeah. Because we need scrolling and scrolling means that you can go up and you can go down, right? So you can view the, the next piece of, of text and you can view the, the previous piece of text. So that's an important thing to do. So... We get the previous, what we need to do actually is, let me see, oh no, actually here is uh, next. Right, so it's not, that. so the remaining text is uh, next actually. Okay, all right. Just making sure that, okay, so this is okay. All right. So, because the way this works is it looks at um, at the next uh, piece of text that it needs to, to fit into the screen, and it fits that. And so whatever was uh, before that doesn't matter. So what I would like to do is to text um, next. next right and so it depends then to the to the next piece right so w what was left unprinted what was uh, not what could not be fitted to the rect is saved for the next print that you do and that's what next is so now what we need to do is save whatever was um, current, we need to save it to prev, right? And I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So I guess uh, it's what's allocated to draw, right? So let's see, uh, call wrap. And call wrap, what it does is just the, it, um, it prepares the text to be printed with the colors that you've, uh, that you've given. And it breaks it up into lines and things like that. Yeah. It's kind of nice. So anyhow. Okay, yeah. So... 
it's put into draw. So let me just check here real quick. Right, so draw contains a list of lines. What I want is the unprocessed text. Or do I? Hmm. Well, uh, I always want to process the text whenever I'm, I'm about to draw, before I draw. Because uh, the, size of this, the, the size of the screen might change. You know, this is quite weird, but it might change between draw calls. And so I would always like to be refitting it. You know, probably we should have a check. You know, uh, make sure that the that the screen uh, that the that the coordinates of size has changed before we recalculate everything. But it's it's still nice to to just still have it, so that if we need to do that, we can we can, right? So let me just check for. So this is next and next. So what we need to do here is to say self text previous. We need to equal it to and yeah, here I, I could use a get set now that I think about it. So that it's always written the same way. Yeah, it's that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, let's actually let's do that. Set we need to pass um self. Oh, self already is a reference, so nothing to be done there. Text previous and the value shift. Okay. And that's a get set. Okay. Let's the same thing I guess we'll do the same thing for text and uh, this is just to separate um, boxes for uh, from their inners uh, or rather a what you have when you have a a rectangle that's only for for drawing a box uh, that is not considered a text rect right is considered uh, something else and so in order to differentiate I made this method yeah next and here we do uh, text this also means Right, because there's another thing I need to do here. Right, so this is why I did this. Because when I assign a new text to a to a block to a rect, uh, I need to to say, okay, so the whole of this is what's uh, left to be printed because it's just been assigned. So. Uh, we still we still need it. Uh, we still need to print it. We still need to process it. So this is on the next, uh, on the pending list for drawing, so to speak. That also means I should say I should set previous to whatever text was at that point, right? And um, I'll get to this one in a bit, but um, so set self text to text next. Wait, what? 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 In saying that this equals this, which. No, no, this is wrong. Okay, now I'm just gonna delete this. It makes no sense. I thought I thought it was doing something else. No, 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 no. That's stupid. Okay, 
Okay. So anyhow, whenever we set uh, a new text, I want to also set the uh, next. All right. So this this incurs two get sets, but that's fine. And I also want to if um so and in this case I don't want to invoke the method. So now I I am going to to access it like this. So if this is defined, then if this is defined. then I want to save to previous what was in here before, okay. All right. And whenever we get set text prep, that's just a straight up get set. So now this is awkward, a Word because whenever we want to check if uh, we have a text, uh, it incurs a call to a get set, which uh, if it was by itself, it would be fine, but it's overwriting text next. So what is uh, still left for printing, and that will reset it effectively. That's what it will do. So we actually need to do this differently. We need to check it accessing not the method, but just the, the raw um, uh, hash uh, key, right? Or hash element, if you will. So yeah, hopefully that uh, still works. Okay. So now, okay, I'm not using it here. I'm using it here. I can just say text. And uh, let me just make sure that this works. Okay. So it does work, but uh, there's something wrong. So in line 301, Okay, so now I just have to check <laughs> that I've um, not done anything stupid in here. Oh, this is not updated, right. So I need to do... Um, actually, I can just... Right. Yeah, okay, so now it works. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to show you what, uh, what that's about. So help. Auto, and this is an uh, an a auto generated an automatically generated uh, setup script. Uh, you know, remember how I told you about uh, I re-implemented make? Well, this is why. So I can just do that. Okay. So all right. So this uh, this works. This works just fine. Okay. We have exactly what we had before, and oh yeah, let me check that the yeah and uh, yeah everything works the way it should. All right, so 
um the fill list okay all right so this is what i was doing so um now after we've done a print we have the what was uh, what was in the previously right huh okay Let me just check that uh, this is true, okay? So after I exit, what I want to do, or rather, yeah, before I exit, it's fine. I want to say, no, wait, no, right, so after I exit, I want to say print uh, C menu uh, that would be okay. So I'm going to say direct children zero. Yeah, this is mouthful. Direct children zero um, text previous. Okay, so I want to print that out. Just to make sure that uh, this thing works. So let's. Do I have the getters? I did not. I did not make the getters. I'm so lazy. Okay. <laughs> I was about to. Okay. So sub, and we want um, rect. Oh, <laughs> what am I thinking? No. So in this case, we do not want a get set because uh, this is not a value we want to overwrite, right? So simple as that. Okay. So uninitialize. Yeah, I'm gonna int it by the way. Okay, so zero, it's not defined. Can we find the children at least? Yes. So there is a children, but there is no uh, text prep. Okay. So that's uh, not what I wanted. So let's actually look at uh, subtext. Right? Oh, right, yeah. Because this is when I replace it, and I'm only setting it once, so it, it won't set a previous because there was nothing previous to it. So what I need to do is, after drawing, I need to append to previous. Right. Okay. I can do that. So, what I want to do is, um, I think in fill. It's a weird thing to think about because I'm tr I'm having to go backwards, right? This is <laughs> no, it, it's a it's a it's a weird detail, so to speak. Okay. So it, you know, it goes a little bit like this, right? So. We have uh, some text here, right? And some more text in here. And But we can only fit this much on screen, right? And so it cuts it right here. And so this is uh, next. And this is um, draw, right? So after some, some processing and things, right? So let's actually wrap it escapes 
and uh, here you might have um, more and more and more and more and more text, right? So everything that doesn't, everything that did not fit on screen would be in here, right? So just this is the pending list, right? So what we want to do is to also have another one right right uh, above it so to so to speak right where we have you know the the something analogous to this right so uh, more you know so more to more to more to more to more and so on and so on and so on everything that uh, has already been fitted to screen right so this is what we see this is what we've already seen and this is what uh, we are about to see. So the problem is, um, I need to save uh, an interme this, that intermediate snapshot of text before I, 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 I put it into, into processes, right? So I think that would be this thing here. But the problem is, aha. Uh -huh. Here it is, okay. Here I'm wrapping it in scapes, right? So because I'm 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 telling it precisely on which line it needs to go. I I would like to have uh, the text uh, without the scapes. So I, I could actually the the scape the the text is not that difficult, right? So it's just actually um, let me just show you. So you have to. Uh, find uh, this pattern um, globally. So that's um, escape this, and you have a what is it? Zero to nine, a to z, a to z, and I think also this symbol as well. Uh, and oh yeah, and semicolons, right? So you have to detect this, right? And there, there's some more particularities to it. I, I've already made a a regex to to clean a string of scapes, right? So I can do that, but uh, you know it's extra work. So it's better to just save the the text as it is. So let's just say my my clean text. Okay, and we'll say nothing, and we'll say um, my line. That's shift lines and we'll append to clean text we'll append the line and then here we'll just pass the line all right and so everything that did not fit into the space we have we're saving it for next and uh, everything that did fit we're saving it to previous right so it's um it's a weird way of uh, of doing it because at at some point in time previous and what's on screen is going to be in some way the same thing all right but um hmm. wait let me give me a second here actually i need to append no yeah All right, that's no problem. We just say so text prev, and what I'm gonna have to do actually, uh, I'm gonna have to initialize this one to to this, so that I can actually uh, append to it, no problem. So fill, and uh, we can remove this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make, uh, you know, we're going to have the, 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 the list of text that's already been printed, you know, clean without scapes. And we just, as we, as new lines uh, become ready for printing, we're just going to append, append them. And I'm actually going to do this because uh, we 
do kind of need these uh, white spaces between lines uh, else um, things that were separated by new lines or spaces would become the same thing it's it, it's harmless to have to have it there it's actually harmful to not have it so yeah we do need that so okay and we just set uh, we we'll just overwrite uh, text previous with uh, whatever was in that buffer before uh, with all the lines appended. Okay. So clean text. Okay. I'm just going to add um, save um, use text for uh, backtracking, right? So for scrolling up, basically, and um, and the leftovers for later prints. Okay. All right. So there we have uh, basically the mechanic needed to go back. Now the pro now the real problem will be going back for real. Well, so hmm. So this is weird because uh, I I wrote this so that it would um, I wrote this entirely so that it would be a text scrolling downwards, right, and never going back. And so now that I that I that I would have to make it go back, uh, it's a little bit weird, right? <laughs> but well. I guess what I could do is make it um, make it an array. No, but here's the problem: if I need to fit the, I want the text unprocessed so I can fit it to the screen again if I ever need to. So actually, I need the entire text, and so the question then becomes uh, where because. When we're going downwards, right, we just, you know, we have a, suppose, a really long piece of text, right? And suppose we can only fit up to here, right? And so we save all of this for later. And we save all of this that we've already printed to our, to our, what's been printed before. But suppose we do this many times, right? And so now this would also be included in this uh, print here. And we have some more up here. When we want to go back, uh, how do we calculate that? And, you know, we, we're going to have to go backwards. So it's uh, a little bit weird to think about, but actually not that weird now that I think about it. Um, because I can actually uh, take the text and split it. Right, so I can split it uh, at characters. Right? I have to split at none, and that means uh, split split for every character. And so then, what we have to do we need to calculate. We need to calculate. Uh, wait up, wait up, wait up, wait, 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 no, no, yeah, you know what, yeah, forget about that, what we need to do actually is this same thing, we need to break it up into lines, but rather than, uh, you know, we just break it up, we just break it up into lines, and what we do then is, uh, instead of going downwards for when filling out the the, the array, the array, so to speak, the the draw uh, uh, line. What we do is instead of going from top to bottom, we go from bottom to top, and then you know whichever lines were were left, it will just go back into prev. Right, it's fine. But this um, 
this uh, loop will need to be bi bidirectional, okay? Bidirectional. So, all right. It does present a little bit of a problem in that if we have a, a very long uh, text, uh, it's going to be a lot. But, um, hmm. well, what you going to do? What you going to do, right? Let me just see this. Because uh, I, the wrap word uh, doesn't quite work if you reverse the string, right? So you, I would need to to do this, uh, the, the word wrapping, do it backwards, and that would be a little bit uh, not so cute. So I'm just going to do this uh, for the entirety. Of the string, you know. Sadly, that's what I have to do. Maybe, hmm. Maybe what we could do. Maybe what we could do is just create this lines array. Right. So now I'm thinking. So now I'm thinking. Okay. What we have to do is create this lines array. And um. And just recreate it entire uh, create recreate it entirely every time we we detect a change in the in the dimensions of the of the rect right anytime we resize the rect we need to resize uh, resize we need to recalculate the word wrapping that's what we need to do so but this array we we should only create it once right it makes sense makes perfect sense so that's what i so that's what i have to do actually okay and then this uh this uh, fill uh method what it would do is it would just uh, start reading from a given index from those uh from that uh, lines from that lines array okay Okay, so this is not all that tough, okay? What we have to do is uh, we take all of this code. We don't, we don't actually need to write much. I take all of this code. And I make it its own method, right? And, uh, and then we can just... Um, uh, whenever we resize direct, uh, we also make this call, and then the 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 splitting into lines would already be done, right? So, because it doesn't just uh, if you can see here, it doesn't just cut words in the middle, right? It uh, looks for a white space or a or a you know or a good quote unquote place to to cut the string at, so that you don't get uh, weird word wrapping, right? So it's it's as correct as I could make it, and so we do want that, and um, yeah. But w why do it every time for the entire text? This is actually very bad on my part. I didn't notice. I guess I was uh, so hell bent on how did you say? I was so hell bent on getting this thing done that I how fast it completely. But, uh, you know, th this is why I sit down and read the code and think about it. <laughs> because I find these mistakes I make and I can correct them. Okay, so let me just finish this cigarette. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll get down to the, to the actual meat of this. Okay. Oh crap, it's almost time for Maghreb. Okay. Maghreb. I can't say that. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me just check. Oop, I can't see the date. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, it's definitely time. Okay, okay. So I need to, to be real quick about this. Okay. Uh, no, 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 myself. Okay. So, um, hit text, all right. And uh, I'm going to have to save these uh, lines. Let me just fill. And yeah, I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of things. Just in case I need them. Okay. All right. So I only need space. That's fine. Space and rows. And no S. And am I using size go now? Okay. So that's good. All right. So we wrap word, it pushes, pushes, pushes. All right. And so this is just um, to ensure that uh, even for lines that are blank, we still have something to print, right? So it prints nothing, but uh, it's, it's good that there is something. Okay. So now text previous and text next should be index, indices, index, indexes, indices. To uh, next and to the next line and previous line to to go into. Okay. All right. So it's so you know. Uh, okay. So spoiler alert: I do not live in a Muslim country, but yeah. Uh, so I cannot hear the call to prayer, but I know it's definitely time for prayer. I can, I can know from the color of the sky, <laughs> so to speak. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it'll, it'll catch me in the middle of this video. So let's see. I've been at it for two hours. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to go pray real quick. <laughs> I'm going to go pray real quick and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay. I'll just make it a separate video. Okay, bye.